Hey guys, welcome to my Dragon Slayer 2 guide. And I'm an Iron Man, so specifically this could relate to you. If you're an Iron Man and if you're a regular account, this will still work for you. Hope you guys enjoy. Hey guys, I'm pretty much going to do a narration over my video because this quest took me six hours long, so I had to speed it up quite a bit. But pretty much here, I'm going to start the quest. I go to Corsaur's Cove, and um, then I just run west, and I go to that guild that just came out, and I speak to the guy and start the quest. I'm not very good at pronunciating things, so please forgive me in advance. But um, after I speak to him, he tells me to find a guy named Dallas on Karamja, and uh, specifically at the bar in Karamja, so I'm headed there. And he'll be at Musa Point, which is right here, and we're going to speak to Dallas. And Dallas is going to tell you that, oh, I have to sneeze, good lord. <coughs> Excuse me, Dallas is going to tell you to meet him in Evlar's lair. So, pretty much, I go to the bank, and I get geared up, and I suggest you do that too, because there's a level 100 scorpion you'll fight, so bring some food too. Also, make sure you bring a pickaxe and some emergency teleport runes. I don't think you'll need them, but just in case. So, um, make sure, once again, you have that pickaxe and some weapons. And we're going to go talk to him in Evlar's lair. He is going to tell us to search the room. After this, you'll see me searching skeletons and things like that. Disregard that. It was the first day of release. You're going to search actually the hole in the wall, and that's why you need the pickaxe. It's over here. Go in there, and he's going to tell you to search the room. This is where the level 100 scorpion pops out, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Uh, go ahead and kill that, and continue searching the room. You'll search this little machine over here. Um, right there, and it'll give you a note. Talk to Dallas, and he's going to tell you after this to meet on Fossil Island. And so we're going to meet him at that little major house thing on Fossil Island. So grab your dis dig site pendant, and hopefully you unlocked that uh, location. It's going to be teleport to you right to the middle of this area. You're going to go downstairs on the very bottom, and you're going to talk to him, and he's going to say that we're going to finish a map. And uh, he gives you some pieces, but you're going to need to find the rest. There's 24 pieces in total, and they're all in the building. Search the chests that are already open, because I noticed the ones that require you to have Numulite to open them don't contain any of the map pieces. So search the open chests, and after you've done that, go outside, and you're going to be searching things like... Um, ferns and fungus. Now here I'm giving him some of the pieces I had for inventory space and he'll hold on to them for safekeeping. So I was trying to figure out what to do in this situation. Um, but after this I uh, go outside <clears throat> and uh, I start searching the fungi. And there's some there and here they are. The ones that you can search have a search option. And then there's a fungus over here that I search momentarily. You have to bear with me because this is the first day of release. It's not like I have done this quest before. Uh, so it did take me some time and I had to communicate with friends. Uh, and you give them all the pieces and you can start the map. Here's the finished outcome of the map. I, a friend sent me this. This should be on Google. You can also pause the video and keep it here if you want to see the final piece. This is me completing the map. You can drag and slide the tiles, not like a normal um, cross uh, map from clues. Uh, so you can drag and spin them around uh, 360 to get them how you want them to shape. And uh, here's me completing the map. Uh, it takes quite a long time and just know that to click the tiles they'll make them spin around and you can click and drag. There are There is the center map piece which you cannot move which is kind of helpful. For me uh, this kind of took a while uh, I even had the solution, so I can't even imagine the people early, hours earlier that didn't have the solution and did it. You can also pause the video once I finish this map puzzle, and you can also see the solution there. But I would suggest going to the mark where I had the picture. Um, there should be a couple on YouTube as well. The thing I recommend the most with the map is just to have patience and put the colors where the colors be and... Recognize that these little islands are a pain. So after you complete the map, <clears throat> he or you have it completely right. He will his dialogue will say you've completed it, you have it correct, and you will see that with my character in one moment. These little islands were a pain, and this took me about an hour. 
All right. So here we go. He says you've completed it. And he wants you to talk to a dwarf because he wants the dwarf to make a boat for you. Of course, the dwarf doesn't make it for you. And um, yeah, you have to make it yourself. Follow my character. And we're going to go to the little outpost area. Just like you would on Fossil Island. Climb this and you'll see him right there. Torsten, I think, is his name. But... Or Jordic, sorry. Uh, yeah, I'll speak to him. You'll need eight oak planks for this, ten swamp paste, twelve nails, a hammer, and a saw. So um, make sure that you have those items. You'll need to um, go ahead and get those. For swamp paste, uh, if you're an Iron Man like me, you can go ahead and use the teleport to a fishing trawler because he sells swamp paste in that shop. Which is exactly what I did with my character. If you're a main account, you can buy it in the Grand Exchange. But uh, yeah, you can use that mini teleport if you've been there before. Okay, uh, one, now we're going to make the boat, which is in the mushroom area. And um, the mushroom field is kind of where Herbivore is if you've done it before. Just go west and you'll build the boat. And you'll be put on this really nice island. Jack X did a good job with it. Uh, and you're going to have to find this location. So pretty much follow my character here. I went west and just kind of guessed and I got it right. I went up the stairs and then downstairs and then down more stairs and I came to this location. Uh, I noticed that basically that door won't open and we're going to have to get a key. And uh, from this point on, we're going to have to find Bob the cat. But first of all, search the skeleton in the corner and you'll get a book. Read all of it. And then the next job is to find Bob. Uh, yeah, I didn't know what to do and I asked for friends in this scenario. Bob is really difficult to find in this quest because he moves really quick around RuneScape. And in fact, it's okay to stick in one area where he may be into world hop. I didn't do that. I got with a friend and we found Bob together. You can use your amulet of cat speak and that's a really great way. Uh, amulet cat speak E and you can move it around and it has like a little... Uh, device, I suppose, and it will help you find Bob. You move the whiskers around and it helps you, it lights up when Bob is in that direction. At this point, I'm just kind of figuring out what I'm going to do. Um, Bob sometimes is in West Farrock, he wasn't there, so uh, next thing I was going to do was go to Taverly. Um, so I'm headed to Taverly. and he wasn't there either. There are some locations that he is, he can also be at the Tower of uh, Taverly home teleport area. I started using the watch and he was northwest and you guessed it White Wolf Mountain uh, That's the location he was at. He wasn't at the home teleport. He can also be in the Catherby Fletching or archery shop um, Basically, I had a friend tell me where he was. He was on White Wolf Mountain I kind of searched the thing around it. You just kind of if you've seen Bob in certain locations a really great thing is you can just hop worlds. Um, but yeah, Bob was in this location way up north here. Uh, I kind of was like asking people, where's Bob? And he was uh, a little east of here. And so talk to Bob. You need your amulet cat speak and speak to him. You see his girlfriend with him and he'll tell you to meet him near the Sphinx. Sphinx is in Sophonim. The best way to get there or how I got there at least was I used the Ring of Dueling and I went to the Duel Arena. Uh, pick some cactus. You don't need to do that. I just did it because I was there. And we're going to take the carpet rides to Sophonim. Now, the quest requirements are Itchler's Little Helper, Gertrude's Cat, and etc. So you've done this quest before. You just need to take your carpet rides back to there. Um, once you've completed the quest, the carpet rides are unlocked. And um, we're going to find Bob there. And the Sphinx is going to try to get basically his memories back because he knows where the pieces are to the map. Uh, the Sphinx. I believe will tell you that it can't remember. It doesn't know where Bob's memories are. So we're gonna have to go see someone on Lunar Isles. And it's the Acromancer? Akumu? I can't even know how to do this, but this is the woman that you talked during the Lunar Isle quest. Um, basically, she says that you're gonna need to make this potion to find Bob's memories. You're gonna need goutweed. Goutweed's a pain. Uh, yeah, and uh, water and crushed astral ruin. You need a hammer and a pestle mortal for this. Okay, and here I am getting pretty much um, the goutweed. I teleport to Trollium, and this is a little reminder for y'all. Uh, this is a location where you get the goutweed. It's um, from a quest. I can't remember specifically which one. It is a requirement, though, uh, of course, for the quest, so you've done it. 
go down here and go below the kitchen and here's where you get the gout weed this is kind of funny I'm not very good at this I got caught many times you just kind of have to be patient uh, caught right now caught and caught and caught and caught and yeah, I think I make it this time I don't know but uh, yep I got it and um, pretty much now I'm gonna go into the dream and I'm gonna slow it down to 1.5 on this boss brought two brews one restore super attack strength and defense uh, amulet cat speak and talk to Bob you go in there pray range I use my dragon warhammer specs if you die, you can uh, get your armor outside for and pay 100k to get everything. I use my bludgeon because uh, it's weak to crush. However, there are some attacks that I notice you cannot um, defend against and it drops your prayer. So be aware of that. It's, it's an easier boss of this quest, but realize it does hit hard. And I think the reason why they don't recommend bludgeon is because the lack of defense. However, I did just fine with it. If you've got a hosta though, I think that is a better choice for your crush weapon. Um, I had no problem, uh, but if you're a lower level and you need the defense, try using a hosta instead. You can use a whip, I'm sure you would do just fine, but of course anything that's weak to something you're going to have a better advantage on. And after this, there's going to be a cutscene, and I'm going to keep the cutscene on regular motion, and you'll get to see me experience that. Um, if you don't want any spoils, you're going to have to go ahead and skip it. But uh, it's a pretty neat cutscene. Jagex did a pretty decent job. As you can see, I basically use all my things. Oh, it's Sage. Yeah, hey, there Sage. You go. go there, I'm giving the list of the stuff, buddy. Um, you will be venomed at some point. So if you have anti venom, that'd be great. Oh, you are venomed? <clears throat> yeah, the, um, the boss, Vorkath, venoms you. Ah. Can you get rid of that with an anti poison, or do you need plus plus? plus? Yeah. No, I've had you just double time. drink, yeah. At least two doses, yeah. I'm in a cutscene. This is pretty cool. Does some great cutscenes. Uh, that cat is ginormous, though. It's like a jaguar. All Odysseus. Big second. So Bob was turned into a cat? Okay, the dragon... Yeah, from the tail two cats. Okay, the dragonkin is super... There's the dragon key. And Bob picked it up. Or, what is that? It's a... Some sort of key for these doors, I assume. Should we open them? Okay, so once we're done with the dream, um, you're going to talk to Bob and he remembers where the pieces are and where to get them. Uh, I decided you've got four different sections or four different pieces and I decided to do the first one, which was to kill Volkarath. It doesn't matter which way or however you do it first, I decided to take the hardest bo boss down first. Um, but um, right now I'm banking. You can see that I'm putting my boots away. I bring diamond bolts, ruby bolts. You need anti-venoms or anti-poisons. If you're an Iron Man, bring antidotes. Uh, best thing that you can. You're going to have, have a double drink to pr protect against the venom. If you're a main account, anti-venoms because this boss will venom you. I'm bringing six brews, two restores, one anti-fire potion. Extended is also really great because this boss takes a while to kill. You want to talk to Brunt, the chieftain in here, and talk. ask him if he, you can kill this dragon. He'll say yes, and uh, bring a range pot to start off ruby bolts, switch to diamond halfway. Uh, that's just the best DPS you can do. Highly recommend ranging. I don't know of anyone meleeing it yet, so um, that's my input. Uh, I'm bringing a manta rays. 
And here we go. Here is me slowing down the fight. Basically, you need to dodge those fire bombs that he throws at you. He also will turn off your prayer, so make sure your quick prayers are on. You're going to protect against magic and have eagle eye or rigor on. Uh, during this phase, you need to run around. He's going to throw up green things up in the air. And you're going to have to run around in a circle to avoid being hit. I think you can walk too, but I ran just in case. Um, this was not too difficult of a boss in my opinion. He can also freeze you, and that little minion that runs up to you, you can use the undead spell to on it to protect against. You need to move when it sees it throwing that fire in the air. As you can see, I move, and when he throws the green stuff, I run completely in a circle. I just keep on running until that phase is over. That is what I highly recommend. And then, of course, you can slow down on this phase. He will keep turning off your prayer and throwing those bombs in the air at you, so you've got to move continuously and notice the mechanics when he and see the little blob zombie thing, you need to use the undead. Otherwise I'll hit 30 on you. 30's on you. I did not bring crush undead or spell or whatever it's called. And uh, it just kept hitting 30s on me, and that was fine. I was still able to complete the boss. But if you want to ignore that damage, I highly recommend that you um, bring the Crush the Undead spell. Those flaming um, fires in the air that fall on you, those take massive damage, so you need to move like I am. And when he throws up those green spells, there's the zombie figure. Uh, you can do Crush Undead, and you saw me hit 28 damage or something on me. Um, make sure your anti-fires up, <clears throat> and you're just going to keep moving, and when he cr throws up the green stuff, keep running in a circle. At least that's what I did. Um, many people had to do more than one attempt for this boss. I was very fortunate, and uh, since my friend helped me out, I was able to do it in one attempt. The final boss is much harder, so make sure that you get used to these types of mechanics, because the final boss actually does something very similar with that fire that it throws in the air. So um, that's my best explanation for Volcraft, is your prayer will be turned off, so you need to have your quick prayers on what you want. Run in a circle whenever this uh, green acid comes up, and um, you, you shouldn't get hit, and if you get hit, it'll be very minor. And if you don't keep moving, you will get hit very hard. Uh, know that you will be venomed, and if you're an Iron Man, you will have to double, double drink to remove that venom. He's dead. After that, you're going to run north, and you're going to go up to this little building thing, go across the crib bridge, go down, go down the ladder. Now, next thing is I, I kind of look at these little totems and search them, and I get these six pages. I don't know if you need this in order to open the door to get to the chest. However, it is early on in the quest, and not many guides have been made yet. And this is the first day of release, so I made sure I had all six papers. Just to make sure I would do this if I were you, later on we'll find out that's needed. Go and pull this lever in the corner. It's very um, small, but it's there and then quickly run to the door because you only have a certain amount of seconds. When you have the key and the shield piece or the totem piece or whatever it is, teleport out um, if you're Venom to go ahead and get out of your house because then it will remove the Venom. I hope that was best explained. Notice that there's a very lever, small lever and it will take you a second or two to notice it. Um, make sure you have that key and that piece before you tally out. You can drop these six pages now. I don't think it's needed, but just for extra precaution, it's the first day of release, I'd make sure you get those pages, just to see if it would open that door. And um, that is Volkrath. He's difficult and the hardest one of the four pieces. Um, so, you know, that's the best I can say with him. Uh, make sure that if you're an Iron Man, if you can't bring brews, I recommend bringing the best food you can and be very careful on your ticks. The next part of the quest is on Karamja. It's south of Shiloh Village, um, pretty much in the Legends uh, Karazar jungle. It's going to be southeast. You're going to need an axe and a machete, uh, energy pots, uh, staminas. Hmm, what else do you need? Uh, pretty much a prayer potion too, which I did not bring, um, but I have high enough prayer to get through this maze. However, um, you're not going to be fighting anything, so that's good, but you will need food. Uh, so go southeast, and you should find this little staircase area. Follow my character, and boom, go downstairs. I found some random people to do this maze with, and it's kind of funny because I taxied them all the way through it. So I was the leader. 
I did mess up a few times. I try to slow down this video a little bit for y'all, um, but there's just so much content that I only had so much time. Follow where my character is going, and you should be safe. I messed up a couple times, uh, so you may want to watch this video first. Uh, you may want to watch this first um, before uh, going in the maze. Also, I protected mage the entire time. Uh, you're supposed to change your prayers, but I was way too busy going through the maze to deal with changing prayers. Uh, so I said forget that and I just pray mage. Um, if you have melee protective gear and range protective gear, you should be okay. You're going to take a lot of damage, but the faster you get through the maze, uh, the better. And trying to switch players while trying to find your direction through the maze is kind of a pain. So I should, I do think protecting mage is a good option. However, if you want to be on the safe side and you're good at prayer flicking, go ahead and switch prayers. Um, uh, my character is 89 defense, just to give you kind of an outlook. So once I got the piece, I pretty much am in Varrock now. And the next step to get the next piece is to go to the Varrock library and to talk to Rolo or Reldo. I think it's Reldo. And you'll speak with him and you'll search. He'll tell you to find, you're asking for the book and he says it's not here. And you search the bookcases and it will be there. And then simply you'll hand him the book and he'll read it to you. Okay, here you're going to speak to Roto, as I was saying. You find the book, and he'll read it to you. And at this point, you're going to have to go to Port Basmaze. And so, Ghost Ahoy request is required. Bring your Ecto file. You're going to go and talk to one of the ghosts. Make sure you have your Ghost Speak amulet. And they're going to go say, go southwest of the bank, and there's going to be a woman, I believe, called Sarah. I probably butchered that, but Sarah, talk to her. And um, she's going to say, well, I dropped it. And so you decide, I'm going to go talk to the woman who made the Ava's accumulator in Draenor Manor. Teleport to Draenor. Make sure you have a Dragonstone, two Molten Glass, and a blow, blow piper thing. It's not a blow pipe, but it's like a uh, two blowing thingy. There you go. And you go north. Make sure you have those uh, with you. I'm trying to think. A blower? Glass blower? Yeah, glass blowing pipe? There you go. So two mon glass, one dragon stone, glass blowing pipe. Go north, go find her and talk to her. And she'll say, I will do it for these items or whatever. And you will simply uh, blow the thing and talk to her and say it's all set to go. She's enchanted it. Go ahead and teleport to Catherby. Or you can use your ghost ectophile teleport and walk to the swamps because that's where Sarah dropped her, her thing but I teleported to Catherby through the carol teleport in my house okay so I don't know what I'm doing in my bank I think I'm getting food uh, yes that's exactly what I'm doing because you will need food for this because every time you use that orb as a hot and cold locator it will uh, drain your prey uh, health the health so mine told me to go south as you can see here, and so I was like, I'm gonna go south. And when you find the exact location, it will tell you you're burning hot. So here I was like, okay, let's go a little north, a little north, take it step by step, no rush, and boom, I found it, there's the piece. And that was that part. Very simple and easy. Just be, take it step by step and no rush. The next part we have is pretty much from what I know in the Shazian house. Uh, you're going to go southwest of the bank, and there's going to be a woman to talk to, mostly just south of the bank. And she'll tell you that there's this little cavern thing in the graveyard. Go to the bank and make sure you get running pots, food, and uh, anything necessary. To get to the Shazian house, you can walk or use your talisman. Let's go downstairs, and you're going to want to go to the bottom floor, okay? So let's go ahead and go to the very bottom floor, which is going to be over here. Go down and run south, and you're going to go down another floor. So once you're at the bottom floor, you're here, and there's this room. This is where you need to be. Okay, this thing is a little hard to describe. Uh, basically, you're going to read this, and it says something. Ignore that. What you're going to want is the riddle. And go ahead and pause on this next part. And you need this little thing. Trust me. It has the names, their weapon, and their location where they're from. It's the weapon they use and the location that they're from. That will help you know which person goes where. And trust me, it is confusing at first, but you'll get it. Alright, so. 
what you're going to do is read the riddle. Everyone's riddle is different, and it's going to say such and such with this weapon is north. Make sure you're looking at your compass, okay? And when I mean your compass, like, I thought this, like, northern thing was north, but it was south because, like, the compass was... I don't know. What you think is north is not necessarily north in RuneScape. Anyway, pick up the little idols on the side. They're basically each person. Make sure you read that riddle really well. It'll say, let's say, Corithium. I'm making up a name. with Or something with the bow sits to the very north. And that will be your big hints. And to the right of that person is Bob. And you'll kind of get it from there. So you read the riddle and you see what either the person... The person's item or the place they're from that describes that person and you will put them in the according location I actually had a really confusing time with this and it's very hard to explain for example I thought that that was the north that's the south Kelsey and so I put those opposite and I had to change that uh, because you need to focus on your compass. It may look north to you, but in RuneScape, that's south. So look at that compass in the corner. My webcam is covering it up. But you may, and know that if you mess this up completely and you put the last idol on, it will reset and give you a whole new Chris, uh, riddle. So you don't want that to happen, so make sure you really think twice and like you're thinking what is left and what's right. Sometimes we think our left is our right, and no, it's the other hand, but that's okay. So basically, that's what it is. You need to place the correct people based uh, on the pillars, and it doesn't have to be their name. It can be their item. You just know it relates to that person. I hope I explained that the best as possible. Uh, it's difficult to explain, but that is how I did it, and... Um, you can carefully look at my riddle and see how I did it. I tried to slow this down as much as possible. The problem is, is I messed up because, like I said, my compass was, you know, what is north in RuneScape is not north on your screen. So uh, keep that in mind. And uh, once this is completed, you will get the next piece. And the final piece if you go by this guide. Okay, here I finished the final piece and I put it in the correct place. And you will get the piece once you search the middle tone. Yay, that's our final piece. And what you will need for the next part is the key, the four pieces, a games necklace, and three fire wave spells, which requires blood runes, fire runes, and air runes. So teleport to Barbarian Outpost. Make sure you've completed their Barbarian mini game training because in order to access this location through the pool, you need to have completed or started that. Now that we're down here, we are basically going to go upstairs to where the Mithril Dragons are um, and light some fires. But the problem is, is I mess up here. But Wrong way, Kelsey. And anyway, up here, uh, go west, and we're going to enter this cavern, and we're going to light these three thingies with fire wave. Not very sure what they are. Okay? And then we're going to leave, and we are going to go downstairs where the barbarians are to the west, and we're going to enter this little crevice or, like, staircase, and there will be anvils, though, anvils there. So go this location, go there, and um, the little anvils are going to be in this room. I'm trying to figure it out in this place, and I get it wrong. But there's a tiny crevice right there, aha, and it puts it together. And I'm on the phone, let's skip that. <laughs> so, now that we have the entire piece together, we are going to go place it into the door. And, of course, teleport back to Fossil Island, and we're going to go back to that rowboat, as just like before, and uh, go back to the island into that little dungeon area. And we are going to put the piece in the door. Walk through, and there's soon to be a cutscene coming up, which I will show you. Definitely. Bad point. Yeah, I didn't remember that, did you? Is the final dragon that thing with like the wings and he's all hunched over and he has that like... You'll see. Zogoroth? You'll see soon. Okay. I straight up bashed that giant ass dragon, and now I'm getting destroyed by a level 35 spider while I'm trying to find a uh, 
<laughs> I'm healing. Key. Yeah. That venom really hits you if you're not protected. Oh, no, 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 I'm not. I got a serpent one. Oh, okay, you're fine then. Could he I was be getting hit constant mountain? 20s. What's that? Could he be on White Wolf Mountain? Yeah, Galvic? That's what Galvic hey. is the dragon? He's terrifying. Yeah, looks like Rayquaza, if you know Pokemon. Yeah, Pokemon! Was that a... That wasn't Ruby Red, because that was uh, the other one. No. No, uh, it was part of... Uh... Okay, after the cutscene, you're going to talk to the dwarf and the cat, Bob. Then we're going to gather all the kings of RuneScape together. This is, you're going to talk to King, whatever his name is, in Varrock first, and then you're going to talk to the King, Sir Amic, whatever, in Falador, and tell him we're going to meet in Varrock to protect, protect against these dragons. Next, go to Arduin, West Arduin, and he's in the castle, and go up one stair, and talk to him, and say we're going to, you know, fight against the dragons. And next, we're going to go talk to the chief in Reloka. The chieftain, I forgot his name, but we spoke to him earlier, when he wanted to kill that big dragon, Vorik. Or whatever his name is. There's so many names in RuneScape, I can't deal with it. Anyway, talk to him. And then you're all going to meet in Varrock. And you're going to have the meeting. So talk to the king. And then you're going to go in the dining room. And that's where the meeting is going to be. After that, you're going to say it's a good plan. And then you're going to talk to the cat. And Bob, because he's awesome. And then after that, that's where the real stuff happens. Now you have four phases until you get to the final boss. So the first phase... We're going to need to go to Reloka. So I'm going to show you my inventory sped up. And um, basically, you're going to be fixing boats. You're going to be fixing the mast. And it's hard to explain, but I will definitely show you. Here's my setup. I brought two prayer pots, two restores, four brews, two super run, one stamina, super uh, extended anti-fire, ruby bolt switch, diamond bolt switch, dragon hammer, and emergency teleport. And my video gets really choppy here, so please bear with me. I'm not sure why it did this. My OBS messed up. I sincerely apologize, but it will clear up in a moment. Anyway, we're headed to Reloka, and we're going to talk to Tristan, the same, I think, Torsten, maybe? And he's going to take us to the first part. We're going to be repairing the boats, as I said. So you're going to focus on fixing the mast, patching up the holes, and um, putting out the fires and healing the members. If you have four inventory spots, this will be a benefit to you. Here we go. Talk to him, and there will be an there will be a hammer in your inventory spot, a uh, swamp paste, revitalizations, and a water trough thing. So basically, you need to fix the mats, mast and heal the members within four minutes to keep the integrity of the ship going. It's only the back mast of the ship, by the way. So make sure you put out the fires, fix the mast, uh, heal the soldiers or revitalize them, and mm, um, put out the fires too, and fix the leaks, of course. And so you need to keep the ship's integrity for four minutes. I've put it on two times a little bit slower in the beginning, and here I speed up. This is a pretty easy, part of it but it takes practice and you just have to be on point and really pay attention <clears throat> next is going to be the agility obstacles as you can see though i'm just patching everything up and healing the members and um pretty much just being on point it took me three attempts but uh it's not too bad you just need to know what to do and fix everything so watch the guide first and you should be good to go once you have been able to handle it under four minutes with integrity, you should be good and you'll be have these next agility obstacles. This is where you need to drink your anti-fire. So after this ship is fixed, drink your anti-fire pod. And I really apologize, but I'm no longer showing cutscenes because after each checkpoint, for example, this is the first checkpoint and there's a cutscene. And here are the agility obstacles. So we've defeated the first part and we had the cutscene, which means it's a checkpoint. That If it's a checkpoint, that means you can teleport out and come back and you will be on the next checkpoint and it will save your progress. Or if you die, too. So, as you can see, you have um, some dragons attacking you. You can protect Prey Mage on and also make sure you drink your anti-fire and you have your anti-fire shield, of course. And um, these agility obstacles, it's actually quite a lot. It's a pretty long agility obstacle, and the second phase, I would argue, is probably one of the longest besides the final boss. 
And I really like how Jagex made this, like, I don't know, like, going over the seas type things. It's, it's pretty cool. <clears throat> so you're just basically going to be following this path. It is quite a very long path. And you will fail many agility obstacles, and it's a quite annoying, but it's all right. Um, they're pretty self-explanatory on where to go for the obstacles. Just follow the course. But if you do get confused, you can always look step by step by my guide. You will need to kill these dragons and assist the people, though, before you continue. <clears throat> I apologize for not showing the cutscenes, but showing the sooner ones. It's just that these are very minor compared to the other ones. And I kind of, um, they would take too much time, and this video was already getting pretty long. So here I got a little stuck, as you can see. There we go, we've continued. And we're going over the planks, and here's the green dragon. It's a pretty long process, like I said. <clears throat> as you can see, my supplies are still running pretty well. Uh, I do have to teleport out at a certain point. You don't realize how many ships were on this voyage until you, uh... Do this agility part. You don't take too much uh, damage from the dragons, but um, keep in mind that if you don't have protect from magic, they probably will hit a little harder. And I will say, it: uh, the more you fail the agility obstacles, the more damage you take. <clears throat> I think we're getting up to the main boat right now. Once you kill these dragons upstairs, or we'll talk to Bob. Kill these dragons, and after you do this, there will be a cutscene. I protected melee and just ranged them, and it was all good and dandy. You want to try to save as much food as possible, but the really, it's just making sure that you get to the next checkpoints. After this, it does get a little bit difficult, because the main boss is there, and you won't be attacking him, but you'll be attacking other dragons. But he will still be able to one-hit you, which is really scary. But the thing is, if you can see him in the background, there is no worries. Here's the cutscene. As you can see, he kills everyone, and it's quite scary. Now they are going to put dragons on you. Okay, so here you have to be very careful and focus on the boss. Unfortunately, my webcam is covering it. I slowed it down a little bit to show you. I'll tell you when the boss does this movement. Right now, you need to move. It is sped up, so you'll have a lot more time. But when he makes that motion, if that thing one hits you, you're dead. It's a one hit. Move. See, every time he makes that motion, I move. It is sped up one times five. Now it's the steel dragon phase. Just make sure that you're focusing on your health and the boss is a priority. Because every time he does that movement, you have to move. As you can see, every time that boss makes the movement, I make the move. The steel dragon isn't bad, nor is the myth dragon. But when you start getting the admin and ruin, it starts getting revved up. So you may want to bank before this this phase. So I think it goes steel, mithril, and then brutal red. But as you notice, every time that boss in the background makes a movement, I move. And it is sped up, so it's difficult to see. But I tried to slow it down in the beginning at the Black Dragon. You need to move at least two spaces, I believe. I think even one space does justice, but it's best not to risk it. After this brutal Red Dragon, there will be a cutscene, and you'll be on your third phase. Or, I'm sorry, I think fourth phase. Third or fourth. But that will be the next checkpoint. And uh, I teleport. I actually tried to continue with the only food I have, and I didn't make it, and I had to tell you out. So I paused it and came back. But here is the cutscene. Okay, and here's the Mythal Dragon. Mythal Dragon's not bad. Now, the Adamant Dragon, in my personal opinion, was the hardest because it spits poison at you. But we'll wait till we get there. Just focus right now on my movements with the boss. It is sped up. The final boss fight, I will completely put down to one speed for y'all. Because it is technical, and it's not like these dragons. So, like I said, it spits acid at you, and it's a pain. So you need to move whenever you see that dragon spitting acid. You see me moving constantly on the admin dragon. Honestly, I did that just to be safe from the boss and the dragon. I'm very fortunate I did not get one hit at all. But I've had a lot of practice from Jad. And also Ohm. 
But as you can see, I'm constantly moving on the Admit Dragon. And I suggest you do the same on the Ruin Dragon. And it may even be beneficial to bring two Stamina Pots. The Admit Dragon, I believe, with its poison, hits much more worse. After the Ruined Dragon, you'll be on the final boss phase, and congratulations that you've made it to this point. I would take a little break since you've been doing this quest for a very long time, and also watch my video in my final boss fight, because it is slowed to 1 um, on normal speed, and watch that first and then practice. And it took me 7 attempts. Here I go, and I teleport out to rebank, and I will show you my inventory momentarily. Okay, this is my last overview narration before I show you the live fight that I did. It was my only successful fight. It took me a lot of attempts, guys, and that's just because, not because I didn't know the mechanics, but because I messed up. This is my inventory. I brought ruby and diamonds, and yes, it took me about six attempts, maybe seven, and that's... This is a very mechanical heavy boss. It's not hard to kill, but if you mess up one mechanic, you will die. And I hope that everyone is familiar with that. And I will show you the mechanics. Please watch the entire boss fight that I do. It is quite long, but it's worth watching each mechanic because at some points I really explain it and I show you the safe spots in the beginning. And there are four phases of the boss fight. So you need to make sure that you watch each phase that I do because each has a different special attack. For here I am just waiting to get geared up and using the restroom and doing everything necessary. Like I said, this will be my last narration before the final boss fight. I wish y'all good luck and I hope that I do justice on explaining it. I suggest you pop melee first if you're bringing a Dragon Warhammer. A Dragon Warhammer or Bandit's God Sword will decrease the defense and it's definitely worth it. This makes perfect and I'm just going to go with that for now. Okay. That is always good to hit it with the Warhammer. I think I hit it with the Warhammer twice, or maybe just once, I'm not sure, but... It's definitely nerve-wracking because he can hit for so much.
Okay, this is the phase I always tend to miss up on, so let's just hope that I get fortunate. Okay, we did good on that one, thank goodness. We're hitting some pretty good hits for now. So that's something to be very thankful about. We're gonna go ahead and switch to diamond. Yes, finished. That's awesome. Gosh, that dragon was tough, guys. I mean, that took me too many attempts, truly. That was for Bob. Okay, so, yeah, that was one heck of a thing. And now we're going to go turn this quest in as we rightfully deserve. I don't really want to see this cutscene right now, but... I don't know what this cutscene is doing, but okay. Uh, and here I am. I guess we can talk to 
Neat would rather be alone right now. Did Bob dive? Did he die? Did I miss that during the quest? That's so sad. All right, guys, let's go turn in this quest. I really liked Bob. So I'm a little bit depressed right now I, that I missed that, but that's okay. We're going to go to pest control and just we're going to go turn in this quest and good stuff. I think that's all I need to do, but you know, I'm not too positive. Let's check this out. We'll go to the quest log. Excuse me. Did I not finish the teleport? Okay. Um, Dragon Slayer 2. Um, I found alongside together I should return to Alec in the Myths Guild. Okay. So, oh, but that's not what I meant. Ugh, I keep doing the wrong teleport, guys. Wow. So, this is such a great way to end my guide, is not being able to find the stupid teleport. Uh... Pest control, where is it? Is it not here? Am I missing something? What? Oh, it's already on pest control, okay. Okay, there we go. And let's go turn in this quest, guys, because I'm so done with this quest. I mean, it took a very long time, and I hope you guys really kind of appreciate my video and watching the progress of doing this on the day it released. I want to completely mention that this quest is not an easy quest, just like Monkey Madness 2. It's a very difficult quest, but it's probably worth it. You know, I'm now going to have back my quest cape and some XP, not much, but something. And it's going to be overall a good thing. So, so let's go turn in this quest. Travel. So basically, I'm just going back to Corsor's Cove and turning in the quest as necessary. Um, many Iron Man have completed this quest. I'm definitely not the first and won't be the last. Um, many credits to my friend Alex for helping me out, though, that's for sure. go turn this in and also check out the mythic skill too because it seems like it's going to be a really awesome place and all right let's talk to this guy let's talk about my quest oh my gosh i don't want to see another dialogue okay there we go awesome finish the quest and i believe there's somewhere where you can get Combat XP. Woohoo! Completed. Okay, so we'll just see how this goes. Okay, guys, I completed the quest and I'm in the Mythics Guild and I'm getting my. Um, I don't have any more of these? What? I guess someone bought it on this world. Rip, sold, out. Okay. I go to another world. Basically, the cave is cool. It's not my favorite. I'm not a big fan of blue and whites and why are they sold out on every world. Um, now, for my overview of the quest. Very long quest. I would say that Monkey Madness is a... Why are they all sold out? Monkey Madness, I would say in particular, is a harder quest. However, Overall, it's a harder quest. The boss fight is much harder on Dragon Slayer 2, and I hope people are aware of that. Okay, here is the the quest, the cape. Sorry. Uh, so that's all good, and it is pretty awesome. It's not my favorite, but I like it very much, and um, that's the quest. I think still they could have made this quest a different name besides Dragon Slayer 2, but 
Overall, I'm very impressed, and Jagex did a great job, much better than I expected personally. So, where to go, Jagex? And I seriously hope y'all enjoyed my video. It's going to require a lot of editing. I haven't even gotten to that point yet. But let me know in the comments what you think, what you thought of Dragon Slayer 2 if you did it. And if you have any questions about this quest, please ask. Uh, this is probably going to be the only quest video I do, or any upcoming future quests I may do. But because I made a complaint video on Dragon Slayer 2 in the upcoming updates, I wanted to make sure that I could give my sympathies or my thoughts on after I did the quest and I've completed it. Woohoo! I am so happy. Um... So, that's my input. Thank you so much. If you really enjoy my channel, give a like and a subscribe, and I'll catch y'all later. Bye-bye.